Mimosa, or Beta Crucis, is a multiple star system located in the constellation Crux. With an apparent magnitude of 1.25, it is the second brightest star in Crux and the 20th brightest in the night sky. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we continue our brightest star series with a trip to possibly the most striking asterism of all, the Southern Cross, so let's get to it. Mimosa is slightly dimmer than any of Pollux, Fomalhaut and Deneb. It outshines the Lion King of Regulus, Adar in Canis Major and Castor in Gemini. Lying some 280 light years from Earth, Mimosa is also known as Becrox or Beta Crucis and is one of the four bright stars that form the Southern Cross, one of the most famous asterisms in the southern sky. Like many large bright stars of its kind, Beta Crucis is actually a spectroscopic binary system composed of a pair of stars that complete an orbit every five years. The pair are separated by between 5.4 and 12 astronomical units. Mimosa is thought to have an estimated age of between 8 and 11 million years. The primary star, Beta Crucis A, holds the designation of B0.53, and this means it's a blue star in its giant phase. It puts it on the left hand side of the Hertzsprung Russell diagram. Indeed, as we can see, Mimosa is so hot that it's almost in the O class of stars. And interestingly, in our local area, there aren't actually any O class stars, which makes Mimosa one of the hottest stars within 1000 light years. Mimosa, alongside Shubhas, Saif, and Al Nilam, are the closest things that we can find to an O designation in our local area. Another interesting thing about Mimosa, though, is that it is the closest one of those stars. What I'm saying is that Mimosa is the closest thing our solar system has to a true superstar, which does make it interesting, doesn't it? With 16 solar masses, Mimosa will unsurprisingly seal its fate as a supernova in a few million years. Its current radius is around 8.4 times that of our Sun. An estimated temperature of 27,000 Kelvin means that Mimosa shines with 34,000 solar luminosities, but not all of that is invisible light. And indeed, the majority of its energy output is in the invisible, ultraviolet part of the spectrum. Mimosa would no doubt even be brighter to our eyes if we could see those wavelengths, and indeed, this is why it's still relatively dim compared to less luminous stars. Mimosa's companion, which like most binary systems, does not hold the nomenclature of Mimosa, is known as Beta Crucis B, and has an estimated mass 10 times that of the Sun, and is also an extremely luminous blue star. Albeit this time it still rests within the main sequence and has a designation this time of B25. Little else is known about the star at this point. Mimosa is not alone in its colour and designation. The Southern Cross is also home to fellow blue white stars of Acrux, also known of course as Alpha Crucis, and Imai, also known as Delta Crucis. Gacrox, the third brightest star of the constellation, by contrast is a cool M class red giant star. Mimosa is thought to be a member of the Scorpius Centaurus Association, which is a large but loose group of hot blue-white stars that appear to share common origins and motion across the southern Milky Way. Just like a giant group of birds, many of these blue superstars flock together, powering their way across our galaxy. According to YouTube statistics, many of our channel's viewers are in the Northern Hemisphere, unsurprisingly really. But is there a possibility that we may be able to see Mimosa at certain times of the year, just like is possible with the southern latitudinal stars like the in-betweener star of Canopus or the strange egg-like bright blue star of Achenar? Well unfortunately, the answer is no. Mimosa is so low-lying that for the most part it is visible in the northern hemisphere. Some of the best places to view are Australia, Brazil and indeed Singapore, as we see depicted here in the morning looking southwards. On the left of the cross, interestingly, are the two pointer stars, Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri, sometimes known as Hadar, which guide our eyes towards the beautiful Southern Cross. If Mimosa were indeed a long-lived star, it might be worthwhile calculating a habitable zone, but as we've mentioned before on this channel, B and O type stars are so short-lived that the chances of life having evolved to any extent at all seem remote. The question however of what might happen if Mimosa were to suddenly approach our solar system does remain fascinating. Mimosa, like many blue giant stars, emits a very strong stellar wind that blows off materials at a rate equivalent to around one solar mass every 100 million years. The solar wind leaves the star at a speed of around 2000 km per second. In this next graphic, we will see an artistic representation of what we may see if the two Mimosa stars were to replace our sun in the sky. First of all, here depicted at perihelion, or roughly the orbit of Jupiter, 
we first see Beta Crucis B appear. I've estimated the brightness of this star as I mentioned before, because little is known and its radius and potential luminosity are unclear. With an estimated luminosity though of around 4000 suns, it's likely similar to the fellow B25 star of 13 Scorpii. From Jupiter, it would indeed torch our planet, shining at an eye-watering minus 32 apparent magnitude. That's unfortunately for our Earth though, not where the torment ends. Next we see the principal and largest star, Mimosa, appearing, and this time replacing our Sun, appearing around 8.5 times larger in the sky. Its power would overwhelm our fragile planet, toasting absolutely everything that surrounds us to a crisp, and turning our beautiful blue world into a scorched hell. Its brightness would be some minus 38.15 apparent magnitudes, which as you can imagine is quite incredible. Mimosa forms part of one of the most striking asterisms of all in our skies. It burns so hot that it almost reaches a category of star that we just can't find close to our sun. Like many blue stars in that part of the sky, Mimosa is part of a flock of stars that wander the galaxy together, so powerful that if it were to be part of our solar system, life would be extinguished in the blink of an eye. Thankfully, the distance is far enough that we can all appreciate this beautiful blue star without fear. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so, and if you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below, and it could just be your idea next week that shows up. Take good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.